just Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, second program on Yehiratzones. I'm getting ready for the beautiful uh, dishes that we eat on the nights of Rosh Hashanah, and we have Jeannie Maimon and uh, also with her sister-in-law, Esther Norman. So first, we're going to have Jeannie. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, regards from the smoke-filled city of Seattle. Hopefully things will change soon and everybody is well and we will continue to be well through the year. Amen. So this morning, uh, we're gonna do two demonstrations and a little more explanation. And um, so the last time we did um, the apples and the prasa, we spoke about the date and the fish head and uh, the black eyed peas. Now, I don't usually make black eyed peas, but I actually talked to three people who make black eyed peas, and I got three different recipes, so to speak. They're, um, and I'm gonna show you, I, I made some, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it before we go on more, but I tried to see these. This is what I made. And uh, briefly, I will tell you what I did. Um, so basically, everybody agrees that you need to soak the, the dried peas uh, overnight, or I, I soaked mine during the day for eight hours. And I changed the water two or three times. Then, um, generally, people saute onions and sometimes garlic. And um, then uh, they cook it for a while. And then uh, one recipe calls for the, the cheek meat to be put in and uh, with the beans and cooked. And another recipe calls for no meat, but put tomato sauce in. And the third recipe just uses onion and, and garlic and beans. So what I did was I sauteed the onions and put in a little garlic. And then I had some fresh tomatoes that were very ripe. And so I added them to the onion and sauteed it a bit. And then I added the peas and then water. And I used a half a cup of dried peas and a cup plus of water. Um, you can probably use a little bit more water. You can cook them as long as you want. I cooked mine for between a half an hour and 45 minutes, and it probably could have been cooked a bit longer. So that's what I have to say about the peas. The, the black eyed peas are a substitute for fish. And uh, there are several things that people do for fish. Uh, you can make fish contumat with uh, tomato sauce or fish con weather limon with egg and lemon sauce. You can fry your fish. Uh, however you like, you can, you can make your fish. And what we do with the fish is, it's a really a part of our meal. So we have all the irasonas except the actual fish to eat, and we eat that with our meal, the beginning of our meal. But everybody has their own way to do things, so you do it however you feel is the right way to do it. Um, then let's talk about the head of the fish or lamb, or the, those people who use um, the cheek meat. So uh, I am not a person who likes to eat fish heads, although there are some people who do. And I used to bring home the fish head and cook it and put it on a plate and just have it on the table. Uh, now, I bring home the fish head and I freeze it. I wrap it in saran wrap and I freeze it. And on the night of Rosh Hashanah, I take it out of the freezer and I put it on a plate. So that's fairly simple. Uh, at one time, we had whole smelts. So we would just fry the whole smelts and you'd get the smelts and the head as well. And uh, then, of course, there are people who use the head of a, of a lamb or a uh, sheep 
and, and actually you can buy those frozen. I have never seen them, but I've seen them advertised around Rosh Hashanah time. You can uh, get those, you know, from your kosher supermarket. Um, the other thing, the second night is the pomegranate. And usually we use it to make uh, shechiyan. But you could also have another fruit that you haven't eaten for a shechiyanu. My neighbor has Asian pear tree, which he gave me some Asian pears. So I plan to say shechiyanu on that. And, you know, whatever it is you haven't eaten, that's what you can use. Um, all right. So now uh, we're going to show pumpkin fila this morning. So for pumpkin, people either usually do pumpkin fila or they do uh, pumpkin borekas. I have never made pumpkin borekas, but I have, I have gave you the recipe, uh, which I could repeat. So the, the filling for the recipe is a large can of pumpkin, that would be 29 ounces, one egg, two tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a sprinkle of nutmeg or cloves, and a half to three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And then, if you're the making the borekas, you would make the boreca dough, and then just, you know, make your borekas like you're going to put potato in them. Uh, just be careful, I think, not to overfill them, because I believe that the filling is a little bit um, not as firm as the potato. So, you know, then you just go ahead and make your boreca. And uh, now I'd like to introduce my sister-in-law, Esther Norman, who is going to show you how to make pumpkin fila, because I have never made pumpkin fila. She makes it for both of us, and I make the prasa for both of us, so we trade. So here is Esther. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Would you call that a needle trade? <laughs> Neither would I, but <laughs> no argument. I do know, I do make prasa sometimes, but um, when... Uh, when my mother, may she rest in peace, was dividing up the jobs of the Yihiratsome as she was getting older, I was assigned the, the pumpkin. And so this is her recipe. And I think Jeannie sent, sent out the recipe for the filling. It's um, a half a can of a 29 ounce can of pumpkin or, uh, you know, the, the, the small sized can, the 14 or 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Uh, a scant half a cup of brown sugar and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and that's it. And I'm just going to mix, finish mixing that up. And again, I think Jeannie has spoken in the past about the variations now in the size that you, the dimensions of the fila that you that you can buy. So looking at what what is here now, the, the recipe that, that uh, we gave you has, um, can make 36 filas. And I used to do four, four strips the long way, lengthwise, on the sides of fila that I got, you know, all those years. But now, this looks, it, it's beautiful. Fila, but I think what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm a little dry. There is the other one. Um, I'm going to use this narrower fila and make three to a sheet the long way. So you can see that. And Oil, oil, oil everywhere. Okay. And I'm going to cut this size into three strips. Okay. And then start. Jeannie said, with a lot of these things, you don't want to overfill them. There it is. Okay. 
Okay. And then to make the triangles, you can see I'll show when we have done it. I'm just going to work your way up. And then I don't, but this is kind of pretty good. Maybe I should double the next one to see. Okay. And this one got to turn me off. Okay, so yeah. Maybe the the next one because this is fairly thin Fila. I may double that the next one because being shorter strips and thinner fila, this may require double. So this first one of three, we're going to just go like that. And then I'll take two. And again, as you go up, you know, if you've, if it doesn't look like a triangle right away, eventually it will. But yeah, these are pretty. There's two there. There's two here. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do this next one in with a double, two layers of the fila. And again, depending on the size of fila that you want, the, the, the size for pumpkins, since they are sweetened nice that you don't need much bigger than that as opposed to if you're doing spinach or something else. Okay. Pastor, can I ask some questions? Sure. Okay. Uh, Sharon Adato says, do you put oil under the first sheet? I oil Oh, under this first sheet? No, I didn't. I kind of, okay. uh, no, she, I think she did. She did. Oh, on the board, I put oil, but if she's asking now that I switched to doing two sheets, did I put oil in between? The answer is no. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm going to need it. Okay. Ros Bornstein says, how many sheets of feeder do you use in the beginning before cutting it? How many sheets of fila do I use before cutting it? Before cutting it, um, it de it depends on. I'm not sure what the question is. I I use how many? In other words, how many do you take out of the package? Take out take out as few. You take out as few as you as you can at a time because it does dry out very quickly. So if I were making all 36, I'd have a, a pile over here with wax paper over it, and I would take as as I needed. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to dry that out. Now this is working. Right, and, and on the bottom, there's a little bit of oil on the the surface that you're working on. And this, what usually I do one layer of fila, but this one, I'm, it was coming out very thin. So now, you see, this is the second with two layers of fila, and it's much better, whatever brand this is. So we're going to do that again. FYI, this, the brand that she's using now is Athens, A-T-H-E-N-S. It's a smaller piece of fila, which I bought at Walmart, FYI. It's smaller and the, it seems to be um, thinner, but good. You know, it's easy to work with. Sometimes in the past, thank you. Sometimes in the past few years, what's happened, uh, and it hasn't happened with this brand, is that you'll start opening the fila and they will be mushed together. So you'll have to improvise and put 
you know, two pieces together because they'll, they will have fallen apart. So that way, sometimes you do get um, more, than, more than a single layer of your fila to work with. But it's all good. Fila is thin. Fila is thin. And it can, you can, you know, it isn't, can't work with it as easily as some other doughs, but it, it's forgiving in, in this kind of a way. So this is going to be some cutting the third set here, because for right now we're going to just we're going to do a dozen. This recipe I think I mentioned um, with the with the half a can with the like 15 ounces of uh, of pumpkin and half a brown cup of brown sugar makes makes 36 triangles so yeah half, a half, of a, half of a large can or a small can so esther does that mean we have to have more uh filas each because we're having fewer guests this year well you know that's <laughs> over the years you either have a big freezer or you have yeah you make the sacrifice make just someone's got to do it, Rabbi. Just <laughs> right. Okay. So I I think you can see how this just climbs up, and I think even though Jeannie warned me that this was not only um, not only narrower, but it was shorter, and I guess I didn't realize how much shorter. But I think having the two layers. Um, compensates very well for that. So, yeah. and uh, someone just asked, "What oil are you using?" Canola oil. Canola, good. Yeah. From Walmart. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you just you, with fila, you you just need it. I'm. We're using parchment paper on the cookie sheet to to bake them in the old days would, you know, you'd put oil on, oil everywhere. That's why I say, we used to say about, um, about Sephardic cooking, we're well-oiled machines when we get together. Okay, so we'll do one more. Okay, this has two, yeah. Okay. Esther, you're also going to be doing uh, barrecas? No, we're not no. going to be showing Morecos. No, we're not showing. We're just Morecos. talking about them. I think Jeannie gave some information about that. Uh, you know, I just, there's not enough time to do too many yeah. different things. And That's what I thought, but uh, I was just getting yeah. messages about yeah. that. So. I have no, like I said, I, I have yeah. never made the Morecos. So uh, I can't tell you, but I got a recipe from Sharon and Dado. So if you have any questions, I would say call Sharon because because she has, has done that, or you know, if you know someone who has made barracas with it. Okay, so yeah. And you probably can make pumpkin pie as well. Yes. You know, people, everybody people likes pumpkin that. pie, so you can do that and just cut it up in pieces and serve right. it. You know, there's no end to creativity. Yeah, so this is, again, what, what they look like. I think they're about the size that yeah I'm used, to, I'm used to because they're nice and they're nice and sweet and uh, you can make know, whatever can size make, you want whatever size you want when when we used to um, calculate like I say when it was a, a more standard larger uh, size fila container you know you could make the spinach ones which were double the size of this. And then I make what I call potato cigars, which has a, a filling that's similar, but not quite the same as bareca, potato bareca filling. And for that, you use the dough the other direction and you just roll up cigars. So there's, that's usually at the end of a fila making day, but, um, Okay, so you now, can be as creative as you yeah, want to be. You can do whatever, whatever you want. But yeah, I know people who need to take pumpkin pie. Um, I, I guess with the potato barrecas. So 
this is the smaller spoon. So now the cookie sheet has what, 16, and you can tell the difference between the first three I made with one layer of phyla. And now just, I have all, usually have on hand this time of year particularly a mixture of cinnamon sugar and you just uh, sprinkle a little bit on the tops of these. For a sweet year, you need all, all the symbolism and taste of a sweet year that we can get. And here we go. I'm going in the oven. Okay. Behind us? Behind me. Yeah, behind this one. This one. This one. How many minutes? I didn't look sure. 20, oh, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Okay. And once again, I always turn my, whatever it is I'm making, I usually turn it halfway through in the oven. So in case your oven doesn't bake evenly or whatever, then you will, uh, you know, it will be good. So thank you very much, Esther. There's one other question. And there's some other questions, so oh, go ahead, okay. Rabbi, are there other questions? Uh, yes, do you defrost or put in the refrigerator overnight? You mean the I'm the, assuming that's talking about the dough. The dough? Well, it needs to be defrosted, however you're yes. going to do it. Yeah. In the refrigerator? Uh, it's probably, I mean, depending on the, on, the, on the weather, if you start out in the refrigerator and then you can take it out if you need to take it out of the of the refrigerator and feel it. I know what you mean. Yeah. What you did. Well, this this I had yes. this is yeah. uh, this uh, fila dough I had in the freezer, okay. and uh, I took it out last night and put it in the refrigerator, and then this morning I put it on the counter to let it come to room temperature. Okay. That's Another normal. question: Once the filas are made. How do you keep them uh, crisp so they can be eaten crisp? Uh, okay. Let's say I'm making them today and I want to have them fresh Friday night. Friday night, okay. So you you spread them out and, and have them cool. And then I store them sing, in a single right. layer with wax paper in between and put them in the freezer and take them out, you know, uh, well, if it's, it's for air version, so you take them out at some point in the afternoon. Yeah, they thaw out. And they thaw out pretty quickly and you warm, you know, you warm them up. They stay, they stay pretty crisp. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. yeah, when you put them back in the yeah. oven to heat them, yeah, they'll, they'll crisp be crisp up. up you know. Yeah, they, they do. Okay. All right. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. And now we're going to try with the with the fila. No, not fila. With a puff pastry to do the spinach. So um, when it comes to spinach, once again, there are many things you can do with spinach. Uh, some people make just a plain frittata or cuajado with spinach and egg and salt and pepper. And I have two new suggestions that I've never tried, but other people like them. One is to put in some nutritional yeast, which gives it maybe just a little body, sprinkle about a tablespoon. And this uh, brand is called Bragg, B-R-A-G-G, -G, and it has an O-U. And uh, I'm gonna sprinkle it a little bit on the on the spinach, and uh, before I start, wrong place. Okay, uh, I just have a date, a tablespoon. So it's dry, it's powdery, and I'm just sprinkling it over the spinach. And the other thing that somebody mentioned to me was onion soup uh, mix. One sec, one second, Jeannie. Yes. Uh, sorry, just on the re reheating of the uh, pumpkin feelers, what temperature would you reheat them? Oh, well, I mean, you know, it depends what you're heating your food at. If your temp, if your if your uh, oven is hot, 
then don't heat them too long. You don't want them to cook. If your oven is real low, you know, it depends. And if you're, if you're reheating them right out of the refrigerator, it's one thing. And if it's at room temperature, you have to use your judgment. You know, you don't want them to recook. You just want them to be just warm and a little crispy. So, you know, I don't, don't leave them a long time. And, when, and are, you, are you using fresh or frozen spinach? I'm using fresh. I don't use frozen spinach. So I, unfortunately, I can't give you the, the you know, the, the content of, of frozen spinach and how much you put in because I don't really know, um, you know, it's, it's wet and certainly have to squeeze it out. But I don't know the different, uh, you know, measurements for using frozen spinach, which I'm very sorry about. But if you use frozen spinach, you sort of know, you know, how you use it. I'm using this that I have here is just an eight ounce bag of fresh spinach. Okay. And uh, so, so I put, uh, I put a tablespoon of this nutritional yeast in it. And I'm going to put not quite a tablespoon of um, the onion soup mix. So this is going to be a little bit spicy. And I'm also putting just a little bit of flour. I'm not putting any salt because all this stuff, first of all, spinach is salty and everything's got salt in it. So now what I'm doing here is sort of tossing it around with all that dry ingredients that I put. Now, um, I have one egg and I put my, I put egg in the spinach in order to sort of keep it together. Otherwise it just jumps all over the place. So I find it, and the egg just gives it a, a little cohesion. And um, I beat the egg. And then uh, I put it in the spinach and mix it around. And I, I'm a great one for using my hands, especially when it comes to uh, things like spinach or prasa that are sort of hard to manage um, with a fork. So I put the egg in and now I'm mixing it around the spinach. Now, depending on how much spinach you're using, you have to use your judgment about how many eggs you want. So now this same spinach that I'm using here can be put in a dish or in a pan and uh, cooked in the oven baked in the oven for a frittata and then you just cut it up into pieces. So uh, when I'm baking spinach, I usually bake it at 400 for about 20 minutes because spinach cooks very quickly and it also reduces quite a bit. So if you're making your spinach in a pan and the spinach that's raw is just sort of covering the bottom, you're going to have a very, very thin spinach frittata. So if you, if you uh, don't have a lot of spinach, then I suggest putting it in a little deeper, you know, a smaller pan that's a little deeper so that you'll, you'll have a little bit of body in your piece of spinach, but that's up to you. Okay, so this is pretty mixed together. And now I'm going to do the puff pastry dough. And uh, now there are two ways that I have done this puff pastry. And uh, I believe one way is better than the other, but it's exactly the same ingredients. I'm just going to rinse my hands here in a minute. Okay, so now, uh, I'm going to put a piece of um, parchment paper over here because I don't want the oil to be on my puff pastry. And then I'm going to sprinkle just a wee bit of flour on the puff pastry and spread it around. 
unfortunately, I put the puff pastry out of the refrigerator and it was very sticky. So I put it back in there for a little bit. So. All right, so now I'm going to open it up, hopefully. Uh, and, okay, that helped. All right. So now, I'm going to, okay. Sort of got wrinkled a little bit, but anyway, it's okay. One thing you have to remember is it doesn't have to look perfect to taste good. So don't get nervous if it isn't gorgeous. All right, so with, I, I'm putting this puff pastry the long way, this way, and I'm going to roll it a little bit. It's not going to roll very much out, but a little bit. All right, let me just turn this around. Second. Oh, see, they're already brown. I don't know if I can wait another ten minutes. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay, uh, that's it. Ten minutes. That oh, only there's some. Yeah. Yeah. Another two minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, another two minutes. Okay. Yeah. So let's. Um, yeah. That's it. They they do leak. Don't worry about it. All tastes good. All right. So now. I rolled this out a little bit, and uh, so I told you there, there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first time I tried this with the puff pastry, I put most of the spinach just across the bottom, and then I rolled up the rest of the dough plain. So what happens is you get more of a loaf kind of a thing. And so when you cut it in pieces, you get, no, that's not it. When you cut it in pieces, you get uh, strips. Like, they almost look like uh, nut breads, the, the shape. And there's spinach in the middle, then it's more big one of spinach. Then the second time I did it, I spread the spinach over the whole piece of dough and rolled it up that way. And then when you do that, you get the pinwheel look. And that was very tasty. And uh, of course, before I had cheese, I have no cheese now. I did not put any salt in, but I can put a little bit of pepper. But don't forget, I have the onion soup mix. So, uh, you know, and, and spinach itself is a salty vegetable. So, okay, so now I'm taking the spinach and I don't know if I'm going to use all of it for this one anyway. And you want to get it close to the sides and on the top leave about an inch of space because you want to be able to close it. So I'm just being very careful here and not putting all the spinach in, but you want to put that out in Sure. Yeah, and you can just set it over there. Set it. There's another. Yeah, and, and you can set it over there, right by the sink. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, you set it there too. All right. So we're gonna take a, a minute to look at the. To get another look at the at the uh, the feelers that are done, uh, Al, can you just tilt that a little bit? Can you no, see no, it? No, you can see it here. You just have to tilt it so, forward. Okay, okay. Yeah, see those? Those look lovely. Yummy. If you were here, you could taste it. Wow, mashallah. <laughs> okay, and actually, the three that I did at first, I mean, you can see they're they leaked. They they leaked. But uh, yeah, the other one. They taste the same. It tastes the same, great. And this was what, what fifteen minutes? Would you? Yeah, maybe less. Maybe, yeah. Well, it was ten to begin with. Yeah, to yeah. a few more. You have, to, have to. You know, uh, it all depends on your oven, right. and and uh, you know, you have to be 
a little bit flexible mm -hmm. and, and use your judgment to see, you know, how, how brown you want them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, don't forget you don't want the sugar, sugar and making them brown. Right. So, nice and crispy. Yeah. Jeannie, I just want to chime in about how yes. much spinach. If you were using, for example, frozen spinach yeah. in my recipe for palmiers, which is with two puff pastries, yeah. they would call for a 10 ounce um, a pa one, pack. one package. Yeah. So oh, okay. So that's one so one frozen spinach right. would make you two would make you two puff of pastries. the palmiers, but there's other things in there. There's Cheese right. and orange choking other, but just to give you kind of yeah. a sense, okay. this Thank is a, a good uh, amount. Yeah, no more. Than that. So here, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn up the bottom, and I better get some flour on my hands or it's going to stick. All right, so. Slowly, slowly roll it, and with every time you roll it, you're gonna pinch it under a little bit so that you're making your roll tight. Slowly, and then move it again and sort of press it down, and then move it again, and move it again, and all right, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this so that it doesn't unroll on me. So now that I have the end of it here, so you're gonna pinch it, just pinch it a little bit to hold it in place. And um, can you show that? Maybe yeah, I can. Just one second here. I'm gonna show you one second. So then, when I turn it over, this is what it's gonna look like. It's just a a roll. And I, you know, try and keep it in the ends, but it, it should be, it, this, this, pit, this uh, dough is fairly easy to work with, so you shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. But this morning I didn't realize that when I, I took it out, maybe I took it out too early, because you still want it to be a little bit cold, because what happened was that it started to stick together. And that was not good. All right. And now we have another uh, another uh, baking sheet, and we're gonna pick this up and just put it in the middle here. And I did not put any egg on top. It's, it's puff pastry. I don't put any oil. I don't put any egg. I just leave it like this. Now it's at 375, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to be 400. I should have turned it up a minute ago, but it's okay because this kind of dough is not like a, it's not like a bareka dough. It's not as heavy, so we don't have to worry about. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna just I'm gonna put it in. But I turned the oven up to 400. And the ends you just leave open. The ends I just leave open. Yeah, you don't have to close mm -hmm. them because. You're not getting anything more by closing it. So I'm going to bake this and maybe, uh, well, I'll try first 10 minutes and then another 10 maybe. So we'll see. Oh, now it's at 400. Okay. So uh, I have a bit of spinach left and I'll probably do the other one, but not right this minute. Um, what else can I tell you? Are there any questions, first of all, about... The spinach, and once I said, you know, you can make it into, uh, you can make a bulema, I suppose, if you want, but there's no cheese in it. But and if you were making bulemas and rolling it, then I would put some uh, bread, dry breadcrumb, or maybe lots of milk between the sheet, you know, at, up the sheet, so that when you're rolling it, you know, you will have something that's sort of in between all the layers of your fila. Um, and if you're making a corjado, just, you know, put it in the, put oil in your pan and put the spinach in there. And once again, I, I bake it at 400 for about 20 minutes. Spinach cooks very quickly. Um, the first time you made the tapada, was that a spinach filling in there? 
Kapala, the, the, I, the layers, or did you get to Yeah, Fila. What was there spinach in the middle? Because that's yeah. another way. Yeah. yeah, you can make the same fila that, that I made the first time or without, without cheese. Without the cheese, meat. right. And you can just put the put the breadcrumbs or some little thing in between the layers of fila. There's some discussion if you put it in a whole like that and then slice, or do you slice oh, first and then good for you. Yeah. I was not paying attention. Excuse me. Yes. I'm sorry. I was not paying attention because I was thinking of the other goal. You definitely need to cut. <laughs> Jeannie, I thought you were showing us a new way of doing it. <laughs> it isn't the way of doing it. This is, this, is, this is one of the ways not to do it. This is the Rabbi Hassan-sized uh, portion. <laughs> Yeah. Because when I do, when I do, I have to, I stick it in the freezer. I, I know, cut. and it's true. The Esther says she puts it in the freezer, and it is easier to cut. Right. But I screwed up. That's yes, whatever. No, you didn't. This is yes. Thank you for whoever, whoever asked. Yeah, that. I forgot it completely about that. And then they cook. They, they bake quicker too. Of course they do. Yeah. And these are going to be a little messy, but they're going to taste good. Once again. You see, you can just be very relaxed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see if they're paying attention. It's a good thing I'm not getting paid for this show. <laughs> okay. I think it's comforting for some of the uh, less experienced chefs to. Uh, Absolutely. To, 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 we, all, we, all, uh, we all make mistakes. Exactly. And so that, you know, when you're, when you're making this stuff, you have to realize that it's all, um, everything is going to taste good when it's baked. So, you know, if it doesn't look nice, that's too bad. But on the other hand, it's not going to affect the taste at all. And, uh, okay. How big is like? I'm going to show you what it looks like. Except I need to pick it up a little bit here. <laughs> Okay, here you go. So, because this is fresh spinach, you can't see that in the middle there's dough, but there is, and it'll sort of puff up when it's um, when it's baked. Now, I'm not gonna. I suppose you could put some yeast on top of this, but I'm not gonna do that because I've never um, I've never used this, so I don't want to over. Uh, you know, I don't want to put too much on. So we'll see how this is. Yes. And Jeannie, these freeze fine too? Yes. Yes. So these, these ones here that I showed you, these are dairy ones because that's what I made last time, but they came right out of the freezer. Yeah. And actually these, you can almost eat them frozen because the dough is not a hard dough. So, um, it's different, you know, it, it, it's very, it's airy dough. So, you know, it, it'll be, it'll be done. You don't want to see those again? Which one? They want to see those again? I don't know. Is it, you don't want to see those pinwheels again? Is there any question or, you know, any comments? Anybody have any other ideas? How long do you uh, bake them for? Well, um, I would say probably 10 or 12 minutes. I have to see because I had it in there first. But uh, typically, I do 20 minutes. But I, I think that this probably takes fewer minutes. So I would say start with 12 minutes and uh, then see. You know, you have to take a look at it. And the spinach will, you know, will uh, wilt and you know, become smaller. So, and the fact is, it, it's not like whatever you're cooking is a, like raw meat. You know, however cooked the spinach is gonna be, that's, that's it, you know. So you don't want it to be too, too dry. And uh, once again, it's up to you to, you know, you sort of have to use your judgment. Um, what else can I talk to you about? Um, is there anything else on the list? Let's see here. That, um, Jeannie, this is 
This is Hannah Adad Oshefa. Quick question. Yes. I've got all of these like puff paste, these fila scraps, like little odds and ends, but like a lot of them because my fila dried out. Oops. Uh -huh. Any ideas what I can do with them? It's like a significant amount. You want to know what you can do with them? Well, yeah, they're like scraps. It's not oh, enough to make even you, another you another could, triangle. But what can I do with them? Piece together a layer in the pan and put cheese in the middle and another layer and put, you know, you can just make plain fila or, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, put a little cottage cheese in the middle. Depends how much you have, and, you know. What okay. You, but you can just perfect. make a, you know, like it's a, Piece together each layer, in other words. Like I'm doing a Mod Podge art project. Correct. And, and use a smaller pan so you can have, yes. you know, more layers. Okay, perfect. But, Thank you so much. That's what I was looking and for. And you can put anything in the middle, you know, whatever you... Cottage cheese. You can put fruit. Fruit, whatever. It, yeah, just... You know, you can put apples in the middle. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll take a look. Thank you. Apples, cinnamon and sugar. Really yummy. Yeah. And, uh, you know... You have to, like I said, you have to be creative. Don't, don't be afraid of it. It's not like you're making, uh, you know, an apple pie and it has to look beautiful. You're, you're making something that everybody's going to eat anyway. So, okay. I have to, I to say something. If you were I'm using just, uh, phyllo dough, I mean the phyllo strips, do you, can me? you use the spinach raw? When I, when I do the thing. If you're yeah. doing... You're using the spinach mix raw, right? Yes, always, always. So if you're using it with the fila, can yeah. you still use it with raw or do you have to cook the spinach first? No, no, no. I don't cook the spinach at all. It's cut okay. up in small pieces. So it, first of all, spinach bakes pretty quickly anyway. But when it's cut up in small pieces, it bakes okay. very quickly. And it, and it, uh, you know, it comes together... Uh, it shrinks quite a bit. So if you have, like I said, if you're making a layer of, you know, like a, a frittata in a pan and your pan is big and you just have a very thin layer, you're going to have a little flat piece of spinach. It's better to put it in something that's a little bit deeper. And okay. even if you have a two inch pan, say, and you fill it up to the top, when you take it out, it's going to be like a half to three quarters. So you can always have it be even a little bit full or over the top because what's going to happen is as it bakes, it's going to become uh, more solid. Okay. So spinach Thank you. bakes very quickly. And like right. I said, I do it at 400 because you want it to uh, not dry right. out. Yeah. So while there's still a couple of minutes that's baking, sure. uh, I, just, I, I would just wanted to maybe summarize uh, the last two sessions and this and this third session talking about the Hiratsonas. It's going for the Sandin on the first and the second night of Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. And last time Jeannie talked about dulce de manzana. It's an uh, apple and sugar or honey and they can make the dulce or any other way that you want to. And that should be Shana Tova and Tuka, a good and sweet year. The second thing that you talked about last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, was was prasa, the leeks. And that's karate. So we ask God to to destroy our enemies and cut off all the, the evil decrees. Anybody coming up okay. against us. And then the third one is the spinach, which is uh, in the oven. <laughs> and you'll see it coming out shortly. And that is for the, our, the Hebrew word for that is sal, salka, so that our enemies should be removed from us. The fourth one is datiles, dates. And so far as I know, you do take them out of a package and come to Ghana, and it's check for words. And, 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 it's, and, and some people say it's tami. Tamar is the Hebrew for date, and tami is for garlic. And the word association there is that they shall be terminated, our enemies. Itamu. The fifth one is what my sister Esther just talked about earlier, is the, is the pumpkin. And that is jikariu, the panera, zahiyotenu, that please God during this time we're coming for Rosh Hashanah, uh, re remember us, but remember the merits that we have. Have selective memory, God, please. And then the next one is the fish, which she talked about, and or the black-eyed peas, the fijones, the dog for the fijones, and that's she fish because they, 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 they're 
fruitful when they grow. And, 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 and the fijones in Hebrew is rubia, and the word association there is is lerahot, is to, is to have mul multitude. And she irbuzachiyote, we have many, many merits. And then the, the, uh, on the second night, if you have a uh, rimon, a pomegranate, and that is, uh, is, is, enough, is also a uh, 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 multitude of, of merits, but it's also in, in many places people have it like in, for a uh, shechiano also. And then the last one is the head of the fish for the cheek meat, which Jeannie has talked about earlier, so that we will be at, be at the head and not at the, at the tail. So, and I think they're getting ready to come out of the oven. Right. Well, even if they're not ready, you've seen, you know, I showed you the picture of the pinwheels. Uh, I don't think these are quite ready yet, but I'm going to turn them around. And uh, once again, do we have any, any uh, added comments? Anybody have what to add? Or any more questions? Okay, well, we'll just say, it's so nice to see everybody, and we, we wish you Shana Tova Umatuka, and we should have good health, and our world should come back to normal, whatever that is. I'm so, nice being here at some. It's been wonderful to see you all. So I can show you what this thing looks like a little bit, one second. Um, but no, it's not quite done yet. So, you know, I can't, I can't show it to you yet because if I take it out, then it won't finish baking. So. Yeah, so, you know, basically, you, you know what pinwheels look like. So, and thank you so much for reminding me that I didn't cut it. <laughs> Too many things going on. Jeannie, you're not going to live that one down. No, you've, you've really <laughs> done, you've really done a wonderful job. And I, I want to thank you and Esther and Al and all the, uh, the the bakers who've done uh, in our series these past, this is I think the sixth or the seventh baking we've done. Uh, we're going to have a break now for all the Chagim, which are falling out on Shabbat and Sunday. But con bueno, mm -hmm. after Simchat Torah, we're going to be back with uh, more baking. I think we're going to do some barekas and bulemas and other things. So uh, enjoy the Chagim. Yeah. The fish, I think we would, it would be nice to have a, a, a program of, with the con huevo limon and con tomat. Yeah, absolutely. So people can learn anyway. Good so be well, everybody. And uh, shana tova. Shana tova. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody do say pola todos. Tis kuna shalim rabot. In briut tova. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.